please welcome His Excellency with a big round of applause. Welcome. President Lai is accompanied by the Chairman of the Prospect Foundation, Dr. Chen Pangshan, and Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of China, Taiwan, Mr. Tian Zhongguang. Welcome. Thank you all for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. It's our honor and great privilege to have all the VIPs, distinguished guests here today with us. Please take a seat. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to the Katagolan Forum 2024 Indo-Pacific Security Dialogue, hosted by the Prospect Foundation and Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of China, Taiwan. To begin, I'd like to first invite the chairman of the Prospect Foundation, Dr. Chen Pangshan, to deliver his opening remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Chairman Chen. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome, please join us on stage. Welcome. Uh, good morning to everyone. Good morning. Honorable President, Dai uh, Ching-de, the former Prime Minister of Japan, Honorable Yoshiko Noda, former uh, Prime Minister of uh, Slovakia, Honorable Edward Hager, former United States Ambassador to the United Nations, Honorable Nikki Hedry, a member of the Parliament of uh, Estonia, Honorable Kerry Lennett, Former Deputy Prime Minister of uh, Latvia, Honorable Artis Fabrics, uh, Commander of uh, Nastrat of India, Mr. Pangja Saran. <laughs> Welcome. And Secretary of uh, General to the President, uh, uh, Mr. Pamongan. I don't know if he's here. <laughs> Thank you. Deputy Prime Minister Ten Song Kwan, my good friend, and Vice Minister uh, Chen Li Ko. All distinguished uh, guests this morning. Good morning again. Yeah. Good morning. Every year, I remember when I stand here delivering the opening remarks for this very important security gathering. It seems to me that the list of uh, challenges facing us has not only grown, but uh, those challenges have become increasingly complex. This is my thought, I think. That is due both to the nature of our interconnected world and to the resurgence of a group of uh, authoritarian states that, like us, are learning their lessons 
adopting and remain obstinate in the efforts to weaken our societies. Try to erode the ties that bind us and rewrite the rules of the international system in ways that benefit their non-democratic worldview. Reflecting the uh, evolving nature of those uh, challenges, the years uh, for them, this year for them, we offer a much needed discussion by experts on three key topics that will have a consequential impact on our world for years, if not uh, decades to come. So the first panel will focus on the threats that are immediately recognizable to anyone here who lives or works in this region. In it, our experts will discuss gray zone conflict in the Taiwan Strait, the South China Sea, and the East China Sea. Uh, this will be followed by a discussion by a second group of uh, experts on economic uh, security and uh, economic uh, coercion. Among others, they will touch on how to build economic resilience, the Ruskin, and the road of Taiwan's semiconductors in stabilizing the regional supply chain. I repeat that. The Taiwan semiconductors uh, in stabilizing the uh, supply chain. As this is, I think, a very important uh, uh, topic. Uh, we're going to discuss about it. Then finally, finally, the third panel will be the uh, discussion the practice and uh, challenges of digital democracy with a special focus on how digital authoritarianism is spread through false information, through false information, and how it affects democracy. So there is a lot of uh, ground to cover, and I'm uh, looking forward to uh, the important discussions that will be held today. So I'm uh, once again very optimistic that together, together, we can not only identify the challenges that is facing us, but also we can just as importantly propose, we can propose concrete and effective solutions on how to address them. So this is a very important meeting and we appreciate tremendously of your coming to participate in this very meaningful event. So once again, I on the, uh, uh, I mean to, 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 to uh, say, uh, from the bottom of my heart, how much grateful we are uh, to each one of you. So once again, hope you have an enjoyable stay here in Taiwan. Also, once again, thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for the remarks, Chairman Chen. Thank you. And please return to your seat. Thank you. Thank you for the remarks. Now, ladies and gentlemen, today it is our great privilege and distinct honor to have His Excellency President Lai ching -de to address our opening ceremony of Ketugalan Forum 2024 Indo-Pacific Security Dialogue. 
Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming His Excellency President Lai Qingde for his remarks. Welcome. Chairman of the Prospect Foundation, Chen Tangshan, former Prime Minister of Japan, Noda Yoshihiko, Prime, former Prime Minister of the Slovak Republic, Edward Heger, former United States Ambassador to the United Nations, Nikki Haley, distinguished guests, good morning. Good morning. The Kaidangalan Forum, now in its eighth year, is a platform for dialogue on security in the Indo-Pacific. This year's forum will cover topics such as security in the Taiwan Strait, economic security and economic coercion, and the practice and challenges of digital democracy. These are issues of concern for democratic countries around the world. And Taiwan is more than willing to work even closer with other countries in search of solutions. I want to extend a, hum, a warm welcome to you all and sincerely thank you for making the trip to Taiwan. Joining us today are political leaders, parliamentarians, and experts from 11 countries. We also have the special honor of welcoming former Prime Ministers Noda and Heger and Ambassador Haley, who will be as keynote speakers. Your presence demonstrates concrete support for democratic Taiwan. It's also a symbol of solidarity for the Indo-Pacific region. In recent years, authoritarianism has grown and it's becoming more aggressive. It's now a challenge at the global level. We have seen Russia invade Ukraine, and North Korea threatened the peace and stability of Northeast Asia. Now conflicts have also broken out in the Middle East. We have also seen China's military expansionism in the East and South China Seas. Not only through military exercise in the Taiwan Straits, but also in joint sea and air trees with Russia in the South China Sea, West, Western Pacific, and Sea of Japan. Such actions are intended to in intimate China's neighbors and undermine regional peace and stability. China has even weaponized trade using various pressures and threats. It's politically manipulating not just Taiwan, but also Japan, Korea, Australia, Lithuania, Canada, and other countries. I'm sure that these unilateral tactics of economic coercion are very familiar to our guests from Australia and Lithuania. We have also seen China use hybrid warfare, warfare tactics, such as cyber attacks, cognitive warfare, disinformation, and political interference in attempts to infiltrate and influence elections in Taiwan and other countries. China has also tried using technologies and the internet to support digital authoritarianism and such influence the development of democracy globally. We are all fully aware that China's growing authoritarianism will not stop with Taiwan, nor is Taiwan the only target of China's economic pressures. China intends to change the rules-based rule international order. That is why democratic countries must come together and take concrete action. Only by working together can we inhibit the expansion of authoritarianism. 
located in the fourth island chain. Taiwan faces the immediate threats of China, but Taiwan will not be intimidated. We will take responsibility to maintain peace and stability in the Taiwan Strait by implementing the four pillars of peace action plan. First, we will strengthen our national defense. We will continue to reform national defense and increase our defense budget as we make ourselves more self-sufficient in national defense and facilitate military pro procurement, we will outfit our forces with the equipment and weaponry they need. At the same time, we will create a mechanism for introducing emerging technologies and build up our civil defense resilience, strengthening our capabilities and showing our resolve for self-defense. Second, we will build economic security. China continues to suppress Taiwan's presence in the international community, impeding us from signing trade agreements with other countries and, particip and participating in the regional economy. However, our resolve to engage with the world remains strong. Over the past several years, we have continued to expand the global presence of our economy and diversify the risks. We have also greatly reduced dependence on China. From 2010 to last year, Taiwanese investments in China fell from 83.8% to 11.4% of total outbound investment, making an all-time low. In the first half of 2010, our exports to China accounted for 43.1% of total exports. But in the first half of this year, the figure was only 31.2%, the lowest for the same period in the last 22 years. We also hope to diversify trade through new trade agreements to further increase the resilience of our economy in the face of economic coercion. At present, the first agreement under the Taiwan-U.S. initiative of 21st century trade has already been signed, and the second round negotiation is ongoing. We have also signed a foreign investment promotion and protection arrangements with Canada to expand our presence in the North American market. As for the other sides of, of the Atlantic, we have signed an enhanced trade partnership agreement with the United Kingdom, marking Taiwan's very first base framework for further economic and trade relations with the European country. We have also achieved significant results with our new southbound policy. In the first half of this year, Taiwan's exports to the 18 new southbound countries reached 50.2 billion US dollars, the highest amount ever for this time frame. Moving forward, Taiwan will continue seeking admission to the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership, CPTPP. Alongside other countries in the region, we hope to create even more economic success and enhance our economic resilience. Third, we will strengthen our partnerships with democratic countries. Taiwan will continue to expand collaboration with our democratic partners in all areas through various based diplomacy. This year's forum will feature discussion on the role of Taiwan's semiconductors in, in stabilizing global supply chains. In this regard, 
we will continue to cooperate with like-minded partners on democracy chips as we build sustainable supply chains to advance global prosperity and development. Taiwan will also step up exchanges and cooperation with other countries in national defense and security. Alongside fellow democracies, we will demonstrate the strength of deterrence, prevent war, and achieve our goal of peace through strength. The final pillar is stable and the principle of cross trade leadership. As a res responsible member of the international community, Taiwan will neither yield nor provoke and maintain the status quo in the Taiwan Strait. On the condition of parity and dignity, we are willing to conduct exchanges and cooperate with China to achieve peace and stability in the Taiwan Strait. Taiwan is determined to serve as a key driver for the development of global democracy, peace, and prosperity. More than anything, we hope our partners can be united as we support the democratic umbrella. We must take collective action to confront the challenges presented by authoritarianism and defend our shared values. To close, I would like to express my appreciation once again for your consideration and support for Taiwan. Let's continue to press ahead side by side. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, President Lai, for addressing the opening ceremony. Thank you. Due to scheduling considerations, Mr. President has to depart from the forum. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me once again for a round of applause, expressing our gratitude to His Excellency President Lai Qingde for joining us this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President, for gracing our forum with your presence this morning. Thank you. Thank you very much.